Okay, today we're going to talk about the the uh, control zan. I get a lot of phone calls from contractors asking me, "How do I wire the contacts? What are the um, what are the uh, dry contacts on here? It doesn't say anything. I can't find any literature." Uh, so I put together something. This is actually not one of my things where I wing out in the field, but I kind of put this together, but I am winging it here. Um, and I made a little drawing right here um, showing what the terminals are. Um, first, let's go to TB1. Okay, TB1 right here. That's going to be probably already wired up for you uh, in the system. Um, but this is the... Um, this is the side that communicates with the panel. So you can see we have uh, on terminals one and two are positive. They're both tied together. So it gives you two terminals and three and four are tied together. Okay, so that's 24 volts. One and two positive, three and four negative. And what we call map net, you may call it SLC loop. It's not going to be an ID net loop because this does not communicate with an ID net device. Only map net. Will be 5 and 6 for map net positive, 7 and 8 for map net negative. And there's two terminals for each that allows you to go in and out for class A operations. And then they give you two stupid screws at the end here, 9 and 10. They're called shield. They, they're tied together and they go nowhere. They're just some place to put your shield. Um, very nice of them. Uh, anyhow, that is TB1, okay, uh, and as you can see right down in here, we have, let me get the light on there, there's our, there's our dip switches, that's where we set the address, uh, that should already be set for you, but what you're looking for is your dry contacts, and here comes the important part right here, let me get this down in here. Okay, I drew that up, and I'm going to just go ahead and tell you what they are. Five is common. Six is normally closed. Seven is normally open. That's one set of contacts. You have two sets of contacts. Eight is common. Nine is normally closed. Ten is normally open. That is contact number two. These do not control individually, but they control as one. Uh, when the control zam is turned on at the panel, both pick. You can't control them individually. Uh, you know, pick one or pick the other. They both go or they both go back. Whatever. These are both controlled by fuses. Uh, this is pretty cool right here. And I've drawn this out. Uh, this fuse right here. Matter of fact, let me pull the little rubber cover off of there. They got little rubber covers, little rubber booties on them. Um, and there's the fuse under there. It's a two amp fuse. Uh, this is going to be the fuse for circuit one, which is terminals five, six, and seven. And this other one here is going to be the two amp fuse for the second set of contacts, eight, nine, and ten. Okay, uh, right here, notice it says, let me back it off so we can get focus real good. It's installation instructions 575-279. Uh, interesting enough, I googled that number, and of course, it prints out all the instructions. I've looked at the pages, and the only page uh, for your reference right here is this one. And I wrote down, this is confusing because it's not as it is, or they don't tell you what the terminal numbers are. Yeah, they're going to show you how this thing works, but they're going to keep one little secret from you on this. Um, so I kind of wrote that, wrote these numbers in here if you want to kind of snapshot that real quick. That's the official drawing. Uh, and also, this uh, drawing gives you the, uh, the ratings for the contacts. Okay. Um, they're two amp fuses, so rated at two amps. Uh, for the for the most part uh, except for if you're going to put 120 volts on it um, Non-power limited then it's rated for a half amp non-power limited DC volts is two amps um, Inductive rating half amp for 120 volts. I'm going to get into this a little bit because 
uh, a lot of times these contacts, um, they're good, but I, I, I don't want to control anything serious off of these contacts. Um, what I like to do with these contacts here would be to put an isolation relay in here. Um, and we're going to go through a few of those examples. Um, nowadays, if you order one of these, you're probably going to get one of these. Okay, this, this one here fits in 11B box. This fits in a 1900 box. Um, there is an adapter plate for this. Um, I'm not doing one on this, so I don't have that part number for the adapter plate. Uh, if not, then it, usually these things just get shoved inside the 11 beat box and you put the cover on it and call it a day. Um, but the newer models do not require um, the 24 volts as the older models did. The other older model required 24 volts. Now the newer model works off of map net and it works off of ID net. Um, the technology is a lot better on the newer models. I can tell you a few things about these. So, but anyway, the newer models they they decide just to give you give you the terminals um, for connecting it. Now, I guess back in the old days, you know this this was uh, top secret and only simplex technicians knew that. But yeah, I guess we really don't care about that anymore. You know, we're we're too busy playing with software nowadays to be you know concerned with that. So here's your contacts. Um, so much for this. This will be covered on another um, video. The one thing I do want to uh, point out that I learned the hard way is that these contacts are shipped uh, in the the state that common and normally open are closed. So they're actually in that state. They're not in the normal state as they are. Once you hook the map net or ID net loop up to it and it communicates with the panel it will give it a command to go back to turn off or go back to normal. Um, the reason I say this is because I went to hook up my dry contacts first and figured I'd get that out of the way and then hook up my communication loop. Uh, I was inside of a large generator and I was hooking up the generator run relay and I hooked up the common and normally open and when I put the other wire on normally open that generator fired up with me inside of there and uh well that was that was something else so i uh, just want to give you that warning there that's how these contacts come shipped um but we'll, we'll concentrate on this now i guess a few things i want to do is wire up some isolation relays off of these relays here and show you a couple different examples of how we wire into this um so i'll be right back i got my uh my stupid headphone uh, head camera on here hopefully um, you can see this. Hopefully, I'll get this out of sight. Um, I've been having difficulty with this, getting it right. But anyway, uh, one of the biggest choices we're going to have nowadays is we're going to have a PAM relay. Um, this is mostly available nowadays, and uh, this is uh, the part number for your PAM relay. You can get it at any uh, electronics store. Uh, PAM relay is pretty cool. It's an isolated relay, okay, and uh, what makes it isolated, there's a diode in there, so um, it's got its own form of suppression built into it, and, you know, it can be installed in a, on a uh, NAC circuit uh, to control things. It's pretty neat. Um, you got your in and out wires, red is positive, and white, for some reason, is negative. Um, so I guess... Uh, in this situation here, what we're going to do on this is we'll go ahead and take, um, well, let's go ahead and take our white wire. I guess one white and red, one red, we're going to, we're not going to use. We're going to, we're going to get rid of that. So let's go ahead and say goodbye to a red and a white, okay, for the time being. Okay, white is negative. So we'll go over here to negative, and we'll go on zero volts. Uh, there's, we're assuming that there's already a negative wire on three. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and put that on zero volts. Okay, and then our red wire, okay, it's going to go on. Let's go ahead and put it on normally open, okay? 
which will be seven on the first set of contacts. And the reason we do that is because we just don't want the relay to sit there energized 24-7. Unless you're in some type of fail-safe application, then you may want to uh, use that. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and get a piece of uh, hookup wire, classic simplex hookup wire, black. Use black for everything, positive, negative, whatever. Doesn't matter. When you make harnesses out of black, that way you don't know what wire is what in the harness. Everything's a black wire. You'll probably remember that from the day. All right, and we're going to come off with a positive on this, okay? And what we'll do is we'll take this over to, uh, now of course we're going to go behind and make this look neat, but we'll take this over to terminal 5. Oops, I'm sorry, terminal 5. Let's get you on the right one. Okay. So now the electricity goes from positive to 5. And then the relay picks. And it puts the positive voltage on to the positive of the PAM relay. And it goes back to the negative, And it activates the relay. The PAM relay gives you a choice. Uh, looks like blue is common, yellow is normally closed, and orange is normally open. So you can control your outside device with that. Uh, and it tells you your contact ratings. It looks like this one here is good for 10 amps at 30 volts DC and 10 amps all the way up to 250 volts AC. Wow. So this, and it also isolates the voltage from here, okay, because we don't want, especially if you're using a motor starter, uh, or, or, or door holders or something where once it turns off that coil collapses and induces a spike through the line it sometimes will get back into here go back and, and uh, play some games on your on your fire lock panel all right um, that's normally what we'll do nowadays okay so let's get rid of the PAM relay and let's Let's go back in the day a little bit. This is what we did back in the day here. Um, we had ice cube relays. I, I don't have the relay uh, that goes in the base here, but I got the base. Um, these work very basic, okay? You always look for the, the blank. Once you saw the blank, you knew this didn't really do anything. This was pretty much a ground, okay? This was one side of your coil of the relay, that was the other side of the coil of the relay, the side with the blank in it. Now you go to the bottom ones. These were all commons. Now you go to the other side. These are all normally opens. I'm, I'm sorry, these are all normally closed. Okay. And the ones at the bottom are all normally opened. That's one set of contacts, two, three, four. So that gives you four sets of contacts. Uh, sometimes that's good because you have one set here. Well, you have two sets here. Uh, you can get a total of six sets of contacts. One, two, uh, four, actually five, I'm sorry, because this set will be controlling this, and then this will give you four plus one, five. So you can get five separate outputs. So you can send one to the alarm company. You can send one to the door holders. You can send one to the security panel. You can, whatever, for a general alarm, uh, you can send it to. So anyhow, we're going to... I left this wire here because uh, it still applies, okay? And then, of course, you know, very basic. What we're going to do here is um, we got to wire this thing up, at, you know, from scratch. So I'm going to come off. Uh, let's, let's get the negatives out. I like to get zero volt out of the way, okay? And we'll go ahead and. Get a wire going to that. Okay, and we'll take that over to our zero. Okay, and also another wire. Um, one thing I do want to do here, a little confusing uh, while I'm doing this, is 
I'm going to cut off, um, here's a diode here. And I'm going to cut off about a couple pieces of insulation. Because on this older style relay, everything's not done for us like things are done nowadays. Okay, so we go ahead and come off a of seven here. Same theory, normally open. Okay. And we have this. I need to strip that out there. Now what we're going, what we have to do in the old days is so this, when this kind of, uh, relay shuts down, it's going to, its cool is going to collapse and it's going to induce a voltage spike. Uh, and it will put it onto this ZAM here. And like I said, it, it can cause something like a com fail, momentary com fail on the panel. All right, we have a diode. Okay. Now, for sake of this, I, I can understand diodes. When I think of diodes, I think of current or voltage, electricity, whatever you want to call it, flowing from negative to positive, okay? The silver is the negative side on here, so the voltage will go in that direction. It will flow in that direction, okay? So what I want to do is, well, I want to go ahead and put my little pieces of insulation on here that I made up. This makes for a nice, neat job, and eliminates some confusion later on down the road here um, and what we're going to do now is we're going to take this relay I mean this uh, diode and we're going to put it in reverse polarity this is positive right that's positive wire going over here and the positives going through the normally open relay coming in here so I'm going to put the negative side on positive okay because when the voltage flows from negative to here it will not go through the diode it'll stop right there it, it will not let it go so it won't be able to go through here and cause a short circuit okay if this is in the wrong direction it will cause a short circuit okay and then we'll go ahead and tighten our connections down okay now why are we why are we doing this why are we uh, why are we putting this diode in reverse polarity on the circuit okay the reason for doing that is is when this relay drops out when it turns off the voltage is released from this cool this cool collapses and creates a spike of current what it will do is it will come around through this diode okay and it will it will neutralize itself It'll, it will satisfy itself right there that spike will happen right there and it won't go into that so that's called a suppression diode that's a little trick we learn to control things the further away this is from there that's fine okay these pan relays you got it made you know it's already built into this thing you know they have one already built in so we don't have to worry about that okay and that goes for any size relay you know if you're if you're going to control something very large you may have a large relay. Uh, the same thing applies. If it's a 24 volt coil, put that diode in reverse polarity with that and it will save you a lot of headaches and a lot of confusion on the panel. Um, I really can't think of anything else. Um, I hope I covered everything. Uh, if not, you know, leave a comment down below. Ask me a question uh, and I'll, I'll see if I can reply and answer it back to you. Uh, have a good day. See ya.